another one. Oh my God, it's even bigger. Guys, it's even bigger. Yeah, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. Biggest fish of my life ever. folks to another slightly exciting episode of Wisconsin Fishing and Outdoors. Today we are here in a little bit of an echoey space. This is my garage um, where I've got all my fishing stuff set up for uh, getting ready for the 2019 fishing season. Open water season is fast approaching whether we like it or not so it's nice to get everything slightly organized. Don't look over there. It's pretty Unorganized. Uh, the reason I just threw this onto the screen, uh, this is a 13 Fishing Origin C, uh, which I picked up, I believe, last year was when these came out. Um, I picked one up right away as soon as it came out. I loved it for about the first couple months, um, but it has done nothing but sit in my reel box with all my other reels. All my other reels work perfectly fine. All my other bait casting reels, all the Shimano's work perfectly fine. However, this one is locked, and if you look, that button doesn't go all the way down, and if you push it any farther down, it doesn't, you might be able to hear that, it's rubbing. So I don't know what's going on, I, I tore the thing apart, put it back together, I even went out and tried to cast with it a little bit just to see if it would release at all, um, and nothing happened, that's why there's a little bit of braid on there right now. But no dice so I don't know what's the deal on this if anybody else has had any similar issues with any of the 13 origin series please let me know um, but yeah just thought I'd let you guys know that that is a problem uh, with this reel if you were thinking about going out and getting one however that is not the reason we are here um, in my garage today we are here to talk about spring bass techniques now on my Instagram uh, so about four or five days ago I put out a poll um, asking people whether they wanted to see a spring bass technique video or a rod and reel arsenal for a 2019 video. I got 50-50 <laughs> for both. I had like, I think I had like 50 votes for each or something like that. So today we're going to do spring bass techniques and um, I'm going to wait to do the spring arsenal video just because I'm waiting on a couple of orders. Um, from a couple of the companies that I'm working with this year that I want to feature in that video along with the rods and reels that I'm going to be using um, in that video. Um, basically the first bait that I pick up, what we call up here in the north, ice out. Um, but that would be, you know, down in the south, like right about now, probably the first lure I pick up um, in the spring season is 100% of the time a jerk bait. This right here is a Mega Bass Vision 110. This is a little bit excessive as far as jerk baits go. This is, for me at least, by far the best jerk bait I've ever used, um, along with the I'm a Flit. This is a Mega Bass Vision 110 in the sexy shad color. They do come in the regular lip size right there. It dives about four or five feet, somewhere around there. And then they also come in the 110 plus one. So the times that I use this, I actually probably would pick this one up first before um, bait right here because those bass, when they're you know in winter, they'll hang out on those deep drop-offs, and you want to be able to have a jerk bait that can get down and imitate those deep diving bait fish. And the 110 plus one does that perfectly. The only thing that I have found when I'm fishing these 110s, most of the time when I'm tying on a new one for the first time, or or I just buy some, get an order. The first thing that I want to usually do is uh, change out the hooks. I haven't done these on these ones yet because these are relatively new, but I'll change them out into. They're uh, Gamakatsu size four uh, treble hooks. Size four, size two, um, somewhere in there. These are the Mega Bass stock hooks that come on here are classified as size four. But yes, so again, the first bait that I'm throwing um, in the spring is a jerk bait. The setup that I use, it's kind of funny because this actually has an I'm a flit on here right now. This is a hundred size um, in, I believe this is the Wagasaki color. This is the setup that I use for jerk bait fishing. Um, I know this is kind of going into uh, my rod and reel arsenal for the uh, 2019 season. This is not the reel that I would typically use um, on a trick bait setup. This is a 6.3 to 1 gear ratio. I like to push it up to a 7.1 or higher, just so when you're jerking, you can reel up in one turn, you're ready to jerk again. 
um, just in case you know you're looking for a really fast moving presentation. Uh, but the big thing about this is the rod. This is a 13 to 5 uh, black series. I believe this is a 6 7 medium fast, which is a perfect setup for jerkbait fishing. You want something with a little bit more, you want some more, something with a little bit more flex right around the tip because when you're using your jerkbait, those hooks can pull so easily. Those trebles freak me out, man. They do not stay pinned in fish very easily. So you want something with more flex. That's why you use fluorocarbon instead of uh, braid when you're jerkbait fishing, just to give those fish a little bit more leeway, a little bit more pull, so it's not directly uh, forcing on those hooks, whereas they might bend out or pull out of the fish. So again, bait number one, we've got the jerkbait. Second bait that I would pull out um, in the springtime is a simple swim bait presentation, whether that be something like this, where you know this is a Kai Tech, I believe this is a Swing Impact Fat, just normal you know paddle tail swim bait that you rig up on. You could rig it weightless on a Texas rig hook, or they also make swim bait specific hooks with weights on the bottom. And whether you rig it, you know, on a swim bait hook like that with the weight on the bottom, I believe this is a size five Gamagatsu, or they also come pre-rigged. This is a River to Sea just regular pre-rigged swim bait, which these work great as well. The only thing I don't like about these is if you lose it, you lose, you know, a nice hook and uh, the swim bait. There's not really an advantage or disadvantage to either one. The only nice thing about this, when you rig it, you can rig it Texas rig so it's weedless. Um, but if you're just cruising open water, uh, wanting to get down a little bit deeper, this has got a nice big weight. So bait number two, swim bait. Next, we're gonna get into another hard bait. This is a lipless crankbait. It just happens to be a Strike King Red Eye Shad in a nice live bluegill color. The reason that I chose this specific color um, for springtime fishing is because that water is typically gonna be clearer as opposed to when it would be in midsummer or something like that when you need um, a much brighter color like that, for instance. So you want something a little bit more natural, something that's gonna match that forage a lot better. Um, and I know I preach in a lot of my other videos, you wanna differ a little bit from the forage, but in the spring, you really wanna get about as close to it as you can, otherwise those fish might actually shy away from that bait. So again, the lipless crankbait's great just for covering water. If you're going to a new lake in the spring, um, you're fishing open water, kind of not shallow, maybe a little bit deeper, this is a perfect bait to cover water and find fish. I have always, found you know ones that would have a nice big rattle in there this is a two tap tungsten so this one's got a super loud knock something like that just to kind of attract the fish pull them in a little bit more because again in the spring these fish are feeding they are bulking up because they just came off of winter they didn't feed a lot most likely they have you know a month or two of warmer ish water where they can stock up and feed before they have to go spawn all right so next we've got one of the simplest stupidest rigs um, ever came up with in bass fishing. It is literally a jig worm, otherwise known as a turd. I think this is a Z-Man shroom head or like a VMC or something like that. It does not matter. This is a jig head with a small stick bait. Um, you can use a Senko, you could use uh, an Ocho, whatever you want to put on there. This happens to be the Z-Man uh, TRD, Finesse TRD. I believe this is mud minnow color. This bait works pretty much year round. It's just nice to use in the spring. If those fish are a little bit more finicky than usual, um, or if you find that they're not biting on the bigger baits, like a jerk bait, swim bait, or a spinner bait, or something like that, this is a really nice bait to pull out and just get bites. You might not catch big fish with this bait, but you will be able to locate where those smaller fish are at. And 90% of the time, if there's small bass around, there will be bigger fish around as well. Next, we're gonna stay on the plastic side. This is a tube. Um, this is a little bit bigger than the one that I would like to use in the spring. This is a Get Bit Baits, uh, just regular tube. I'm not really sure how long that is, I forget. Um, I wanna say it's like two and three quarter inches or something like that. But a tube is just another bait that works pretty much year round. And I've started to use these a lot more for largemouth, not necessarily in this configuration, as far as you know, having the tube jig inside it, I've been Texas rigging these, um, and that I found has produced a ton of fish when I'm flipping cover. It's just something that people don't usually use. So if you're fishing a really, really pressured lake or one that you know has seen a lot of Texas rig senkos flipped into brush um, in maybe late spring before the spawn, when those fish are starting to move up 
in stage. This is a really, really great option because it's just got all of those tentacles. When that thing plunges through cover, these things just go all over the place. Lauren. What? I just got the tour manual. Good, good job. Mm -hmm. And again, I have preached Get Vet Baits ever since I went, got on board with them because these tubes last longer, they catch more fish, and they have this amazing scent. <sighs> it's just great. Their tubes are fantastic. I will leave them linked in the description below. Next. Kind of seeing with the soft plastics again, this is just a normal brush jig. However, this is a finesse brush jig. But on the back, just got a nice craw. This is a Strike King Rage craw. You can use just about anything with a little bit of flap. In the spring, I would actually use something with a little bit less flap just because sometimes those fish um, might be a little bit more finicky because of the water temp. It's just a bait that works all the time um, and you can throw it up into some heavy cover, uh, drag it out, flip it under docks um, if those fish are already moved up and staging to spawn. Uh, just another great late spring option. Along that crankbait line, again, this is a Strike King 1.5 KVD square bill. Uh, I'm not really too hyped about this color uh, for the spring, just again, because that water is usually a little bit clearer. I go with something a little bit darker, like a brown or a bluegill color. A square bill, again, just a really great bait to find fish. If you're searching for fish, if you've been going around all day flipping and just have not been able to get anything, this is a really good bait to just throw out and find one or two fish just to kind of put together a pattern. Just a really, really simple cast retrieve, bounce it off some cover. Uh, whether it be rocks or trees or whatever you can get away with. Just another great search bait in the spring just to figure out what stage um, those fish are in, what phase they're in. Coming up on the final two lures here. This is a massive, not really that massive I guess, this is a live target wake bait. If you've been following the channel for a little bit, you know I have my very own Lake X. And uh, at this Lake X there are massive bass which I figured out eat what's going to be the final lure on our list here, spinnerbait, there's giant fish in there. Like we, I have seen personally eight pounders come out of that lake. I've seen pictures of ones that are just ungodly huge. We've caught six pounders out of there. We decided, you know what? What about big swim baits? Like there's guys up here that fish big swim baits, but not really religiously. The only reason that this is on the countdown is because you will see these uh, bigger swim baits, wake baits in future videos, um, and we are going to throw them in the spring. If you guys haven't ever thrown big swim baits like this, I absolutely urge you to try it. This is going to be my first year really trying to throw these a lot more um, because this is Wisconsin. We don't really have that many, you know, seven to ten pound bass, but this lake does. So, you know, we're going to try and try and use a southern tactic up here and see if it produces, you know, a couple PVs for us this uh, spring and then and, and then into the summer. So big swim baits not really a practical decision if you're fishing like a normal lake um, Like Lake Winnebago or something like that But if you're fishing a lake where you know there's giants absolutely throw big swim baits All right final serious lunar on the countdown. This is the money making deal right here I bought about 18 of these after last spring uh, when we had our spinnerbait feeding frenzy, I'll put up a couple of clips and uh, some pictures from uh, last year. I feel busting and I heard like that. Oh, another one. This one feels good too. Oh my God, it's even bigger. Guys, it's even bigger. Oh my God, it's even bigger. Look at the, my drag is going guys. Holy cow. Oh my gosh, it's like a five. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Look at how chunked up that freaking bass is. This is the spinnerbait. Freaking money. This was the deal. Sexy Shad, I don't really remember exactly. I think it's just a KVD spinnerbait. The deal that we found last year was the differentiating blade colors and for them to be willow blades. In the spring, again, these fish are usually gonna be a little bit more finicky. They are feeding a lot, but they, they're feeding on specific things. And in the spring, 90% of the time, they're feeding on bait fish. Bait fish meaning like minnows, shad, all those things like that, because the bluegill are starting to get up and spawn too, so they're also feeding on those little smaller minnows and crayfish and all those little uh, little creatures. So the, 
bass need to find something else to feed on, so they're looking for minnows and all that good stuff. So what willow blades do, they create a little bit less disturbance in the water. They still have a nice big flash to them, but they also imitate a bait fish a lot more than a big Colorado blade would. And then on the back, just a nice kicking paddle tail swim bait. Anything will do, just as long as it has a little bit of kick um, and it kind of matches the color uh, that you're going for with the spinner bait. Last year, we caught I caught more big fish on this one specific lure um, than any lure I ever have in the past in the spring. You know, I always kind of, me and my buddy, we joke about this, but we always kind of laughed at spinner baits until we actually started throwing them. Um, these things produce fish. They have been around forever for a reason. Um, if you're at a lake where you know, again, there's bigger fish, um, in the spring, these things are great to cover water. It's a big bait, produces big bites and a lot of them. Definitely urge you to get out, try some spinnerbait fishing, pick up a couple of these KVD things and just go to town. If you guys want to see more videos like this, um, I'm definitely thinking about doing a spawning bait uh, video as well um, for bed fishing and stuff like that. Summer baits, fall, winter, all that good stuff for bass. Um, definitely leave a comment in the comment section below. Again, the 2019 Rod and Reel Arsenal video will be up next week. It is cold as shit out here, and my uh, my nipples are starting to stick out pretty badly. So I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode. Wisconsin fishing and outdoors. Peace.